Hi everyone, welcome. It's Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. How are you keeping? Today's video is all about spraying shaker style doors. I'm going to be spraying a giant shaker style door um, in just a moment. We're going to be using a Graco 695 airless sprayer. We're going to be spraying silk. Yes, silk. And it's going to be for the primer too, so three coats of silk. Yep, a bit controversial, but that is my style and that's the way I do it. Anyway, today's video is all about how I spray the shaker style door and how I get into the actual recesses, my little technique of doing it. So without further ado, let's get cracking. I'll show you the shaker style door. All right, so these are the shaker style doors. They are giant, they're just over 600 wide they're about 2.5 so they're yep they're oversized they're huge um but we make them um with a 12 mil panel and six mil add-on strips um and that way we just keep it lightweight so if you're making it with 18 mil or you're making it any other method it's going to be super heavy and yeah not perfect so it's already been dusted down, but I'm just going to double check that there's nothing left on it. Always just go over with a brush or an airline. That's been my technique for a long, long time and had no problems. All right, so I'm going to turn the sprayer on. Sean, come around here. And this is what we've got. Oh, it's actually the 595 I'm using today. It's set up. It's on quite high pressure, and I believe it's um, down to the temperature. We're spraying at around 1700 PSI. I like to get it a little bit lower most times. When you're spraying emulsions, you need to ramp up the pressure sometimes a little bit more um, than usual. Again, I'm spraying trade silk. Um, anyone who's watched me or follows me or subscribes to me knows that I just do, mainly if it's a white anyway, only the white, I do three coats of silk. Okay, yeah, it's controversial, but you don't give me your opinion until you've actually tried it because it works wonders. Sean, just have a little whiz round and show all the components that we spray this way. And we get amazing finishes all the time. So basically, we're just spraying one coat of this. Um, then we sand it down with P240. And then we do two final top coats, no sanding in between. And we get really, really good finishes. And it's tougher than you think. So if you're rolling this, I wouldn't advise it whatsoever doing it my technique, but for some reason when I'm spraying, it gives a much better finish and it is stupidly tough and durable. I've got no reason to change. I've had lots of people saying to me, use this paint, use that paint, do it this way, do it that way, but I don't need to change. When I spray this directly onto MDF, it is much better than just a standard primer, trust me. When you put this on and you try and sand it back, there is no getting it off. There's Even if you've got a screwdriver or something like that, you try to get that out of the MDF, it just wouldn't. It's absolutely solid as a primer. Anyway, that's, that's what I'm going to be doing. Just going to be going straight on with the silk, uh, with the airless sprayer. It goes on quite heavy. I'm going to get the extractors on. Um, so there we're on. Get some airflow going. Um, hence the reason I'm not going to be wearing a mask. Firstly, you won't be able to hear me. So what I generally do is I hit the back edge first, okay? So again, set up, well, let's go over the tip to be honest. We're going for a 310 fine finish tip, okay? All right, so just gonna hit that back edge. I've only got a five meter hose, so it's just a little bit tight when it gets to the end, but. Okay, so I've hit that back edge, all right? So next thing, I mean, you could play around with what you wanna do next. But I generally just give it a hit here. Try and aim directly into that corner. Go at a constant speed. Don't change your height. Let's, let's go for these shorter edges. So what I'm going to do is always start away from your work. Because most of the time, unless you've got a little gadget, I think it's called a clean shot. When you press the trigger, you get a very slight drip or a spit. So let's say spit. So if you start it where you want to spray, you're most likely going to get a spit. So I always start away. Ready, Sean? And then get in that corner, okay? And then again, let's go for this one. So when we do make shake style doors, um, and if anyone does make shake style doors, if you're not making them our method, you're making them like the traditional style where it's tongue groove. Um, 
where a panel slots into a groove, then you're most likely going to get a little line in between. It's quite hard to get rid of that line, especially when you're spraying. The spray doesn't want to go into that gap and it doesn't want to fill those gaps. So, yeah, you really want to just try and get it in quite heavy, at least with the airless sprayer, to try and fill those gaps. Three coats is generally sufficient for us to close those gaps up. Um, two, sometimes you see little hairline um, gaps there and you're like, well, oh, am I going to make it and cover that on my last coat? Um, but, yeah, it's all about how you make your doors. When we glue these down, we generally just use PVA on the strips, pin them down, move them around so the glue isn't lifting that workpiece up too high and creating a gap. That makes sense. We don't want to get the squidge out because that's a bugger to clean up after. Anyway, let's go for this edge. Okay. Spraying my leg here. And the last one. Okay, and a bit of a water drip. Okay, so next thing I would generally do, if the door wasn't so big and so awkward, I'd spin that around and do the same so that unpainted edge would be over there and then I'll just go for a spray. Um, I could have done that again, that side, spun it around, but it's a pain in the ass, it's a big door, I cannot be bothered to do that. So basically, I am just gonna spray towards myself and try and just get that gun quite close. It's all about how fast you go with your gun, otherwise you're just gonna get pulling. Yeah. I'm not sure if you can get in there, Sean. You can just show that we've just got into those gaps, all right? Nicely. All right, so now we've hit all of those corners. I'm simply just gonna go for the whole door. So I'm just gonna simply just go for a big sweep of one final hit of the door. All right, again on the edge. And yeah, so let's just go for it now. Oh, typical, We've got a little blockage, mid vid. Let's finish it there. All right, back on track. All right, I'm just gonna keep going. I generally don't let go of the trigger. But for this one, I'm going to do it. Mix it up a little bit. Start away from your work. Constant speed. I'm about 150 mil away from my work. This is where I'm going to start aiming into that corner again, get that fill right into that corner. Again, another blockage, pain in the butt. So it's the last pass. There we go. Oh, to be honest, it's a little bit light there. I'm going to go for one more hit on this edge. I'm not bothering with the top and the bottom, mainly because we're going to be 50 mil away from the ceiling up there and 50 mil away from the floor. So it's absolutely pointless in my eyes. Um, so that is it. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. When this is dry, it's going to get a hit with P240 to sand it back to make it nice and smooth. And then it's just simply going to get, going to get another two coats exactly the way I've just done it just now and um, the same methods um, with the same paint exactly the same nothing changes so that's it really um, it's pretty simple it's all about the speed of your gun how you move the height um, it's a mixture but you get the feel you know after you've been doing it for a few years it gets easy with the gun um, you just got flow you just got flow and just do a lot of practicing before you know it you get you you'll know how far your gun's got to be away from the work how fast you got to move um because it's so easy to get a pull i'll give you a little demonstration of a pull okay right so let's just use this all right can you see the light all right so ready if i go for too long ready yeah look at that can you see that this is a big blob, and that's just like one second. So, got to let that dry now. That's my little spot board where I spray over. Anyway, yeah, so that is it really. Um, hope you've enjoyed. If you've got any more questions, let me know. Um, we're trying to hit the 50,000 subscriber mark. So if you like the video, make sure you leave a comment um, and subscribe, all the usual, thumbs up. 
Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great Sunday. See you next Sunday. Take it easy. Ciao for now.